there's still some really offensive pictures in here that I can't really show. Um, for instance, the screenshot picture. I can blur that out in my editor, but um, I can't blur it out if I leave it in the uh, actual video. So that's why you're not seeing it throughout the video. But if you want to see one of the messed up pictures... No, nope, that one's still too far. <laughs> Hold on. Here you go. Exercises for your toilet. Yep. You can do sit-ups on the toilet, apparently. Did you know? I didn't. Hmm. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back. I'm your host, That Dragon Guy. And we are back for reading more crude jokes from a book. What do you think? Let's get into it. First book, uh, first joke, rather, is on page 18. If you happen to find the book somewhere and get it yourself, you can follow along. No, I cannot tell you where to get it. I have no idea. Like I said in the last video, someone gave this to me. Anyway, a Native American boy asks his dad, Father, why do Americans have short names like Joe, Ben, or Sam, while we all have long ones? It's simple, says the father. We name our children after an event that happened. Uh, for instance, High Mountain got his name because he was born on a high mountain. Do you understand, hole in rubber? <laughs> How many of y'all got kids because of that accident, huh? Next. <laughs> 19. Screaming and yelling, an old woman enters a police station. I'm here to lodge a complaint. A few moments ago, a virgin young man tried to rape me. Um, excuse me, ma'am, but just how do you know he was a virgin? Because I had to show him how to do it. I don't think that really counts as rape anymore if you had to show him what to do. <laughs> Next. Excuse me, where is Fifth Avenue? A tourist asks Franco. Follow me, says Franco, and takes the man to the Empire State Building. They go up to the ob uh, observation deck and stand by the ledge. What do you see down there, Franco asks. People, answers the man. How many? Thousands, says the man. So out of all these people, you had to pick me. <laughs> Someone doesn't like to be talked to by strangers, which is a good thing to follow, a good rule to follow. <laughs> an American and an uh, Iraqi? Iraq person? I don't know. Meet. The American boasts about the wonders of American democracy. Where I come from, I can stand in the center of Washington Square and scream, Clinton is a bastard! At the top of my voice and no one will do anything to me. So what, says the Iraqi. I can stand in the middle of Baghdad and scream, Clinton is a bastard! At the top of my voice and no one will do anything to me either. <laughs> <laughs> a Pollock farmer had two horses, but couldn't tell them apart. He thought long and hard until he had an idea. He'd cut off one of the horse's tails. Now, he had no problem telling them one from the other. Months went by, and one day, the other horse's tail was accidentally cut off. Now the farmer couldn't tell his horses apart once again. He thought and thought until he came up with the idea of cutting one of the horses right ear. Now he could again tell which one was which. Soon after the other horse's right ear was also accidentally cut off. Again the farmer couldn't tell them apart. That's when it hit him. One horse must be taller than the other. So he stood them side by side and realized that the black horse was taller than the white one. <laughs> All right. Next. A Texan's wife dies. He calls the local paper and asks to place an obituary. Sue's dead. The operator tells him there's a six-word minimum per obituary for the same price. In that case, would you please add selling Chevy pickup 555 Three eight six seven. 
<laughs> well, this one's long. <clears throat> A guy gets on the bus and sits next to an extremely beautiful nun. Well, this isn't going to go where he's hoping, I'm sure. <laughs> Without thinking, he puts his hand on her thigh. She turns around and slaps him hard on his cheek. Mm. The bus driver, who had seen the whole scene through his uh, rearview mirror, motions the guy over. I know this nun. Go to the woods near the abbey tonight. She's always praying there. That night, the guy goes to the woods, and just as the driver has pro that, just as the driver had promised, the nun shows up for her night uh, nightly prayers. As soon as he sees her, the guy approaches her, telling her that God has appeared to him, and that he was destined to be the father of the Messiah, but only if he plants his seed that very night, at that exact hour. The nun agrees to have sex with the guy. After all, it is God's will. However, she says, she's on the rag, and he'll have to enter her from behind. When they finish, <laughs> the guy turns to the nun and says, Look, I must confess, I'm not God's messenger. I just told you that because I wanted to sleep with you, and I thought it would work. Answers the nun, I have something to confess to. I'm the bus driver. Told you it wouldn't go the way he was hoping. <laughs> A man phones home and asks the butler for his wife. I can't right now, says the butler. She's busy. Doing what? inquires the husband. She's in the bedroom. Is she alone? No, answers the butler. She's with a man. Listen carefully, instructs the husband. There's a gun in the drawer under the phone. Take it out. Yes, sir. Good. Now go to the bedroom and shoot both of them. The butler, that. The butler puts the phone down and the husband hear, uh, hears footsteps. Two shots and then footsteps again. Did you kill them, he asks. Yes, sir. Very good. Now open the window above you and throw the gun in the pool so that it won't be found. Into the pool, sir, asks the butler in surprise. But we don't have a pool. Is this 555-5432? Uh-oh. Apparently he got the wrong people killed. <laughs> that, yeah, all right. <laughs> Why did you tell your friends you married me because I'm a good cook when you know I can't even boil an egg? I needed an excuse. Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. The convict and the hangman walks to the gallows on the day of the execution, or the day the execution is supposed to take place. Jeez, it's cold, and it's pouring too, cries the convict. What are you complaining about, replies the hangman. I have to walk back. <laughs> oh man apparently it's not just crude jokes but it's jokes about death throughout this book um tune in tomorrow for either a gameplay video or another try at some more jokes in this book I figure eventually I'll come to a joke that's just really offensive and someone's gonna get mad please don't I'm reading it from a book I'm not making these jokes myself this is the book Go find it, find the author, and cuss them out. Not me. Anyway, y'all have a great day. I've been your host, That Dragon Guy. Bye, guys. You know, guys, my air conditioner freaking hates me. It's been 80 degrees in here all day, and now it won't go down below 76. I think I need a new place.